Hi and welcome back to Lovely Gardening Bits. I tried to start this intro outside but there's just a lot happening in the area. There was a police helicopter overhead, there were dogs barking like lunatics out the outside, um, there was sawing, there was jackhammering. I just want to say hi if you're new here, if you followed over from last week's garden video where Catherine and I sat down for a chitty chat or somebody left a comment saying patio chatio and I was like that's genius. These are so good, like thinking of things like that. But yes, this is going to be a monthly thing. So this month it was on my channel, next month it'll be on Catherine's channel and then back and forth, vice versa. Probably maybe until October, we'll see, we'll see. I'm hoping now when Catherine comes over here next month that we have a little bit of weather because lads, it has been so cold here in Ireland. I feel like the last couple of days have been a little bit milder, but it's going to get cold again next week. And it's just like, ah, would you come on? And I think because of that, the seeds are so slow to germinate. As you know, I have the little plastic greenhouse out the back and my windowsills in the kitchen, like the house is always cold anyway, but the windowsills in the kitchen only get light in the morning. So that's why I'm leaving them in the greenhouse. And the past few years, it's worked great. This year, things just taken ages and it's making me oh, just testing my patience, just making me really impatient. So as I said, in the greenhouse, things are really slow to take off, but I will show you what's happening, what like little seedlings are coming up. One of the seedlings that are not coming up is my erigeron seed and it's so annoying. And it said the germination was 14 to 31 days and I think we're coming up to like, I think I, I don't know. Like it's a long time in my world. <laughs> now in fairness, I sewed them in the absolute wrong container for that, right? So there's that issue. Then yesterday I was Googling online. I was like, what is the story with erigeron seeds? Now I followed, I think I thought I followed <laughs> the back of the seed pack that I had. But in my research yesterday, with the erigeron seeds, it said not to exclude light. I excluded light. I excluded light so hard. They didn't have a chance. <laughs> They're never gonna germinate. So I have another packet of seeds. So I'm gonna try and sew them today. I bought new seed trays yesterday. Let me just show you. So I got new plastic lids. So I'm gonna actually look after these properly now this year. At the end of the season, we're gonna wash them out. We're gonna store them properly because I didn't do that last year. It's my own fault. And all this adds up, do you know? So I'm gonna look after the stuff properly this year. Then I bought some more seed trays. So these are larger seed cells. I think these are gonna be great for the likes of peas or beans, things that you want to have like a good root system before you move them. So there's like a pack of, this is a pack of five of those. I got more seeds, like just regular trays. I want, to sew, ooh, sure. I want to sew lettuce because, listen, we might as well take advantage of the cool weather. So I was reading, if you're sewing lettuce, not to do it like too late in the summer or kind of when it gets too hot. They like cooler weather. Plenty of that here. And I got these. So these are like tiny little guys. And yes, if you are new here, something you should know about me is that I'm a seedaholic. <laughs> I just went bananas this year buying seeds. So I'm going to have to use, I have to, to sew my seeds. Did I buy more yesterday? Yes, I did. I bought one packet. And be, as I said, because things are slow to germinate, I'm just, I'm getting really impatient because I'm like, I want the garden to fill up. I want, I know it's only mid-April, but still, I want the cottage garden area to start taking shape, like in pots. I'm going to be digging like a new flower bed today, hopefully. And so over the weekend, I took a trip out to Tully's Nursery, which is close to like the airport. It's like a, about a half an hour away from me here. And I just picked up some plants. I just, I'll show you those. And then yesterday I went to the Malhide Garden Centre. I just felt that I needed to do that. <laughs> and I got some more plants. That's my hobby, leave me alone. Then do you want to know what else I got recently? Okay, I'll show you, one second. Don't judge, but you can absolutely judge. I would judge if I was you, I did it. I bought yellow Crocs because they bring me joy. I bought them specifically for the garden. I did buy a white pair as well, but I'm like, I don't want to ruin those yet. So these are so, mad looking like I'm not going to wear them out in public I'm not going to want to wear them out in public but they're perfect for the garden and it means that if I get like soil and muck and stuff I could just like give them um a wash and they're on sale on Amazon so okay the hair is up out of the way let's go outside I'll show you the plants that I bought and then the seedlings that are starting to come up okay you know I mean business when the plants are in the wheelbarrow so this is what I got in Tully's so I bought three new lavender plants this is the lavender that I like. It's the Lavendula, so it's the Hidcoat one. It is gorgeous. Right now, it smells like lemon. It's very strange. I bought three of these Erigeron Glaucus. Now, they're not the mix of pink and whites. They're just pink, but they'll do the job for this year. So, I got three of those. I got three of these. Achillea the Pearl. I've never seen those before. Just thought they'd be something nice 
different from like the regular Achilles. So three of them. Got six of these. So they're Achilles Cerise Queen. Now these last for ages, like my ones, the terracotta ones over in that border. In that border they last for ages and they're coming back up now. Probably could actually divide them. Just thought it'd be nice to have like pink. So I got six of those because because I'm thinking I'll kind of do clumps like two, two, two. And then then I bought these, three of these, Nepita Fascini Snowflake. I thought that was interesting because I only have like the purple uh, Nepita. And I was like, oh, a white be nice. So as you can see, it was kind of themed with the purples, the whites and the pinks. And we have these buttes that I got in the garden house in Malahide yesterday. Okay, let me start off here. I absolutely love lupins and I bought two of these. Now I should have bought three, but like they were 20 euro each. But look at the color. Oh, it's like yellow and orange. And they're really kind of quite established plants. So hopefully the um, slugs won't eat them as much as they did my seedlings. I bought one of these, Salvia nemorosa. And I bought two of these, Agastache. Agastache or Agastache. And I thought, you know what, I can cl clump those two with that one. Just have like a bit more interest as well. Then I bought three of these. Let me get like a nice one to show you. So they're called... Ooh that thing osteospermum pink spermum osteospermum and you can see the three plants that i got they have like different variations when it comes to color this is what i really love look at the tips of them the way they're like a neon green almost when they close up oh, i thought they were gorgeous and there's lots of buds on them so got three of those and then i just really loved the colors of these geraniums so I got two of those because they had a deal. These, the smaller plants were 4 or 5 for 20 So, you know, we had love a bargain. But aren't they really like, but aren't they really nice and vibrant? I thought they'd be fab. Okay, let me show you what is in the greenhouse. Okay, the peas are coming along great in there. There's a couple of different variations of them. We've got more peas and beans here that are coming on. Then... In here, this is the wrong container that I planted all these or sewed all these in. So at the far side, we have the zinnias. Um, I had to cover this again because I don't know if you can see, hold on, see some of the seedlings at the back there have gotten chomped by slugs, I presume. So that covered it just at night. Um, and yeah, this is the Erigeron side. Now that little shoot there, I think is a weed, <laughs> but nothing is happening, but I am gonna re-sew them. And then we have the table. So here, We've got some shoots of Sweet Sultan. Whatever they are, can't remember. <laughs> Nothing happening with the Nepita or with the Verbena. And then here we have the Sunburst Tomato, not Tomatoes, Sunburst Sunflowers. So I sowed two seeds in every cell just because, see they're here, only one has come up. So if I just put one and it was that other one, not this one, it would have been like a waste of a cell. So I'm sure they'll, they'll come up. Here, what do we have? Ooh. Oh, we've got tagetes in here in those two rows so they're going to go with the tomatoes they're supposed to be a good pest uh, deterrent we've got zinnia can't read that <laughs> some kind of peach zinnia i think anyway good happening in there what's in here oh we've got more peas so we have this is how i label it sugar snap sugar snap and then climbing pea climbing pea there's nothing happening here nothing here when did i sew these so seventh oh that's only what like 10 11 days ago oh we've got sweet corn oh i'm excited so i think i sewed maybe the entire package i'm not sure love grown sweet corn so it's good to see growth in there okay so what do we have here purple something oh this is the petunias in these three rows so that's great we've got some orange tomatoes sprouting Nothing happening again in the lavender. I find it so hard to grow. Got lemon tomatoes, lemon tomatoes. Got like a decent germination. The sweet peas are coming on great now. Can you see the shoots here on the sides are starting to spread out? So remember a few weeks ago we pinched off the tips and that was to encourage the sh side shoots so that we're gonna get bushier plants. So that's working now here. This, I wasn't sure what was going to happen and I'm still not sure. So see the, the it's kind of gone green mouldy or like mossy almost. I think this is 
not enough drainage in here but got strawberry chilies and sweet peppers but I do see a strawberry chili seedling sprout so I'm gonna leave that out uncovered in the sun today to see if it helps to um, dry out the soil a bit and as soon as they get like a little bit bigger when they have like the true leaves maybe no actually the second yeah first set of true leaves I will um, transplant them we have finally have growth in the cucumelons section I've never had cucumelons before. They were all the rage last year, I think. Then we have Calendula cantaloupe. These are gonna be gorgeous as, as cut flowers. Then we have Ozinia cupid mix. Oh, so we've got a good bit of growth now, lads. And so Matthew, my nephew and I only covered these with compost there a couple of days ago. And maybe it's like the change that a little bit of increase in the heat but they're sprouting up so yeah what I'm going to keep doing is anywhere that I see green I'm going to just bring up the compost to cover the green on both of the bags give them a water bish bash bosh let me give you a little update so I can't remember if this is a climbing rose or a rambling on this side but I need to actually tie that in I'll do that today I then need to tie this one in as well I don't know if I'll keep that for being in there. We'll see. Because I'm thinking as well, I will bring this flower bed out a little bit and incorporate it into this corner. And then look. Look at the blossoms on the tree. Oh, this is the apple tree. Aren't they gorgeous? This is a little tree that Catherine gave me and I planted it a couple of weeks ago and it's looking good. I wonder should I put a support in it? I probably should. The lavender that I underplanted in. Oh, look at them. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm olive farmer. They're the only fruit on it. But anyway, that lavender is coming on great. And more of the tulips have opened. So, aren't these beautiful? Look, aren't these beautiful? These have opened up. This is the one that has. This is the one that has two tulips coming out of one stalk. They're actually so nice lots more in there lots of color and these have opened these have opened too i didn't know i had bought them the frayed edges they're not as bad as i thought that they were going to be again the, sp the pots here are starting to sprout so we have like foxgloves delphiniums that seem to be eaten again that's so annoying when that tulip finishes i'm going to take all that out but yeah this is the catmint it's coming on really really well i need to weed this border and i think i'm going to move the buddleia which is there that needs sun this is really taken on i need to cut back up there fox gloves that i planted um a couple of weeks ago seem to be taken on we've got geranium we've got a fuchsia yeah i need to weed here i mulched and the weed the weeds are still coming up now look at that poor little geranium i think i might have mulched too close to the stems so I need to figure that out and like the weeds there. But look at my Brunnera. Isn't she beautiful? So yeah, as I said before, I wasn't sure if this was there when I pulled up those foxgloves last autumn, but she's gorgeous. My little tree is coming on. The Acer finally has leaves, which is great. Anyway, let's get busy. Doug I'm exhausted 
I'm going to stop and have um, lunch and have a sit down, but I think that's going to look so good. And then I think really soon I'll get like some kind of rock border edge for like that border for that one. And then whenever I dig up the back one properly, that's not today. And then whenever I extend this one out, I'll just get like a heap of rocks and it'll look fab. And I'll just have to distinguish the borders anyway. But right, that's it for now. I need to sit down. <laughs> Okay, she's looking good now. She has compost on it. And I'm gonna now lay out the plants. And you know what? I forgot I had these. I have these different grasses. Hmm. Because I want to add like a little bit of height kind of at the back of that border. But, but to differentiate and kind of make this a corner, I might put a couple of them there to give that bit of height and structure. And then if I do want to extend the border, I can. I can just add more grasses, but oh, that's back breaking, I reckon. Um, but yes, let's put in some plants. So I'm gonna do the grasses. So this rose here on the obelisk, actually somebody was asking me about that obelisk. I don't know, was it here on Instagram? And oh, I think I got it in the orchard garden centre but they have them everywhere comes in two halves you just screw the middle part together happy days and it just gives height and structure so that is going to be like a yellow climbing rose I think so what I'm thinking then is if that part is going to be yellow I think I might plant the lupins beside it to kind of tie in I'm going to do some of the erigeron but first up what I'm going to do is and it's what I did with that border too is I'm going to lay out all the plants where I want them and have a think. Okay gals, I think she's done for now. So we have the rose that I need to tie in here. We've got the two Cerise pink Achilles, that thing that I can't remember the name of, my Lupin, my Erigeron, the thing, Erigeron, thing, Lupin, Erigeron, two more cerise achilles and then a couple of grasses on the end there the poor grasses look miserable but but i think it looks good and now i'm very impatient i want it to all grow now and look fantastic now <laughs> 
but it gives me plenty of room as well if I wanted to sew some annuals like I might do cosmos like in the gaps and stuff because I like the idea of having movement oh here comes the sun um, I like the idea of having movement when you're sitting on the patio kind of looking over to this section of the garden so I'm so happy that took me so much longer than I thought but I thought that like with my rose in the centre um, on the obelisk that's yellow and so you yeah, having like the two lupins tying in would just be fab and like the bit of pink from the original and the os, osteo what are they called hold on osteospermum I think ha yeah I think having the pink then tie in with the pink roses on the archway will look fab but lads we did it I'm weary. Doesn't it look great? It'll look even better now when it's fully grown. Or not fully grown, like more established. Um, and I tried really hard not to overplant. I tried to remember what you guys said. Put the annuals in the gaps. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna finish up for now. I'm gonna tidy up now. I leave everything out like get like a little bit more sunshine and then I'll have to tackle the other borders in next week's video. I just don't have the time. That took me so much longer very hard it's very like wet soil with all the rain that we've been having but um no i'm delighted now i'm so excited <laughs> just prepare if you come over to instagram i'll be showing you kind of like nearly daily updates over there because i love seeing things progressing you know anyway listen thanks so much for watching make sure you subscribe give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in next week's gardening video